Well, I think this country um, has given me everything. Uh, I have uh, lived the British dream. I came here uh, at the age of 11, couldn't speak a word of English, um, head at the back of the class, okay, and of course, very quickly learned to read and um, speak the language, but actually think in the language, dream in the language. Um, and I want to deliver the opportunity for every uh, child in our country, every family. It's a difficult time at the moment for our country. Uh, we've got to rebuild the economy and we've got to get it growing again. It's uh, a time of economic hardship. It's a national crisis in the way we've just been through the pandemic, which was another challenge uh, for us. You know, no one anticipated war on our continent. You know, wars were sort of uh, conducted in far-flung places. We now have war on the continent of Europe. Um, this is a dangerous time, and I think I am best suited to be able to steward the economy uh, through this and, of course, look at where we can help more. Uh, you promised when you were Education Secretary that teachers would get a 9% pay rise. That's what you would be hoping for. Will they get their money? No, you're Chancellor. So in the manifesto, uh, we made a promise that uh, starting pay for teachers will be £30,000 a year. The 9% begins to deliver that. Um, and then we need another 7% next year to complete that. I pledge that I will do that. That was my submission to the pay review bodies. Uh, but, but I'm asking more senior teachers um, uh, to take 5% uh, over two years. Uh, I'll, as Chancellor, we'll look at the pay review bodies from across government and we'll make a decision together. My message to all public sector workers is, look, we, I feel your pain, but we've got to come together because if we don't bear down on inflation now, it will hurt us even more in years to come. That's why I think we have to be fair but firm on fiscal discipline and get the headroom so that we can then inject that growth in the economy for SME, small businesses, and of course for people in terms of uh, you know, their own uh, uh, taxation. So junior nurses can expect 9% as well? Well, I will look at um, what the pay review bodies will uh, uh, do for uh, nurses and for the rest of the um, uh, public sector. And I will, with my uh, cabinet colleagues, make a decision. Again, my message is we have to maintain that discipline and come together in this really difficult time. It is a national emergency, Kay. And if we do this well, we'll come out the other end a lot stronger. If we bear down on inflation and inject that growth into the economy, OK, so Mr Hunt, Mr Javid, both saying they'll cut taxes, uh, including the increase that we've seen in national insurance and cut corporation tax to 15% from 19%. Will you do the same? I'm looking at everything. I said it when I took on the role of Chancellor. Um, nothing's off the table. I'm looking at uh, corporation tax. My concern with the corporation tax rise to 25% is the one tax. I used to sit on the board of a FTSE 250 company. Um, the one tax that international investors can compare globally is corporation tax and investment decisions are taken over a long term. So my concern was we were beginning to head towards a place where we are perceived to be on the high end of corporation tax and I want to look at how we bring that back down okay. but I need the headroom by making sure I ex exercise fiscal discipline and bring down the cost of government to give me the headroom to make those changes but I, nothing's off the table and I want to look at of course the um, uh, 19p, you know, bringing down uh, income tax from 20 to 19p, see what more I can do on that. SME, small businesses, um, you know, we've got a business rate review I want to look at how we can help businesses, uh, the small businesses, not just the large ones, uh, to get through what I think is a genuinely an economic national emergency. Okay, um, just, just to clarify, um Mr Hunt and Mr Javid, we're hoping we'll uh, commit to an on-camera debate with us um, on Sky. Will you do the same? I would certainly commit to an on-camera debate. Great. Um, you say you want to cut taxes and increase spending, but how are you actually going to fund that? So, when I was in the Department of Education, um, the Department of Education is a large department. Uh, we have 8,400 uh, people in the department. Every department was asked to look at um, reducing the cost by 20%. It was a tough exercise. Um, we looked at how can we continue to deliver our pledges in the manifesto and skills schools, families, which is so important, you know, that investment in skills, T levels as famous as A levels, making sure we deliver family hubs in half of England's local authorities. I understand all, all that. that, right? But I managed it. I managed to get close to that number. I want all of my colleagues now as Chancellor uh, to do the same thing. If I can bring down the cost of government 
and be disciplined around public sector pay, we just talked about public sector pay, I think I can have enough headroom to be able to deliver the tax cuts. On the other side, why, why is that right? Because if you bring down the cost of government, you bear down on inflation. Because that is equally important. Okay? I have to deal with inflation and, of course, lower taxation. Look, ultimately, a conservative economic policy is one of lower taxation. It works. We know it works historically. That is what I will do. OK, well, let me try and ask the question in a different way then. Mm. What services would you cut to, cut, uh, to fund tax cuts? So I just described to you my experience. I was the yeah. Secretary of State for Education. Yeah, I'm asking right. you about other departments. So what I so what I'm, will ask every Secretary of State, and the returns should already be in, because Boris actually asked all of us to do this, um, I will go through those returns from each department to see how we can, I managed in education to get close to that number, that the, the ask of me. Tough, but I could maintain what I needed to do in terms of what I wanted to deliver on skills, schools, family, uh, and of course, um, the cross-cutting issues like recovery from the pandemic with the National tu uh, Tutoring Programme, the uh, Send Green Paper, the... But the health uh, services, not, the health departments are not going to be able to cut their budget, are they? So, uh, they just the are. health department now under Steve Barclay, I can tell you there is none better than Steve Barclay in being able to focus uh, his... Uh, you know, uh, laser-like focus on looking at where inefficiencies are and making sure he delivers those uh, cost savings that the health department, uh, I'm certain, can do. So you and think there's some flab in the health service well, budget? I, look, I, I think it's only right that across government um, we do this exercise. It's an important exercise. It's only right that we exercise fiscal discipline when it comes to public sector pay. Why? Because if we do that, we can bear down on inflation. Okay. That, that in itself brings down inflation. So you're right? saying 20% cut in, in every department? Well, that's what I want to make sure we get to. That will give me the headroom to be able to deliver ta tax cuts, which I want to deliver. OK. An emergency budget? Um, I don't think um, I need an emergency budget. Uh, we are in the middle of a um, leadership uh, campaign. There's a caretaker government at the moment if things change and I've discussed this with my perm secretary uh, Tom Scholar uh, then of course I will you know, take whatever action necessary. We need to ask you about your um, investigation into your own uh, tax affairs. Um, what was your reaction when you saw reports that your own tax affairs were being investigated by your own department? So I was you know, clearly being smeared. I was being told that, that the serious fraud office, that the National Crime Agency, the HMRC are looking uh, into me. I've, you know, I'm not aware uh, uh, of this. I will, I've always declared my taxes. I've paid my taxes in the UK. Uh, I will you know, uh, answer any questions HMRC has uh, 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 of me, but I will go further, Kay. I'm going to make a commitment today that if I am Prime Minister, I think the right thing to do is to publish my accounts annually. That's the right thing to do, uh, because I think we need to take this issue in many ways, off, off, the, off the table. Um, I will publish my accounts annually. That's the right thing uh, to do. I will look at you know, what, what the options are in terms of backdating or just publishing annually. I think it's right to do it. What about your tax returns? I will, that's, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. My tax return, I will publish annually. OK. Over the last decade? Well, I, if I'm Prime Minister, I will, I will, I will publish them um, going forward. I don't think being retrospective is right. You know, I was in business before I came out of that. Of course, I'm now in politics. Is it true that your family benefits from an offshore trust? My family does not benefit from an offshore. I don't benefit from an offshore trust, nor does my wife. Um, we don't benefit at all from that. Um, my mother and father live abroad. Um, uh, that's you know, their, their business. They're not, they don't live in the United Kingdom. Have you ever had non-DOM status? I've never had non-DOM status. Have you ever used an offshore company to avoid tax? Never used an offshore company. Has your family? My family, my wife has never been non-DOM. She's never used offshore status or a company to avoid tax. Have you told us everything about your business affairs that could potentially impact on your future ability to be Prime Minister? Yes, I have. Have you ever used offshore companies or services firms based in tax havens for the purchase of property or properties in the UK? 
No, I have. Have you fully declared all of your properties in the MP's register of interests? Yes, we have. Did you pay the requisite taxes, including stamp duty, when purchasing properties? Yes. Uh, you or your company uh, once held £20 million of Yugo shares in a Gibraltar-based company. Uh, what was the reason for using offshore financial structures like this, if not for the purpose of avoiding tax? I was not a beneficiary of um, uh, the uh, Balshaw um, investment that hold, held those uh, shares. Um, and Who was? My family. It's a, it's a pu on public record. Um, uh, my my father. But, but why would you do that if it wasn't for the purpose of avoiding tax? Because he's he lives abroad. He's, he doesn't live in the United Kingdom. Okay. Two final questions, if I may. Just to clarify, 110 percent. Obviously, you're Chancellor, so you know you can't be 110 percent. But just work with me here. Um, there is no way that any funds are being funneled into your parents' accounts or whatever, so to keep your hands clean. Ab uh, absolutely. Fine. Um, thank you for answering those questions. My, um, my very uh, great pleasure. It's important because sure I tell is. you why. Because you know, of course, you know, I've been in business. I've been a successful uh, businessman and um, entrepreneur, and I think uh, it's important that um, we have this discussion. But when I'm prime minister, I think it's equally important uh, to make the pledge that I will uh, publish my accounts annually, my, my tax returns annually, but not backdated. Well, I just think being retrospective is, is, is very different. You know, I'm, it's when you take on the office. But that's what people office, want to know. I, I, listen, I declare my taxes um, uh, to HMRC. I will answer any questions from HMRC. That is a pledge uh, I make. It's important that you know, we have um, okay. a prime minister that is able to, to do that. I think it'll make a difference to the country okay. if, if, going forward if all prime ministers publish their uh, tax returns. Yeah, I, I, hopefully you realise it's important for me to ask the question of several course. different ways just to make sure that it's all covered. You are um, a very rich man. How rich are you? Um, so I've been very lucky. I've self-made. Um, I um, you know, have done really well uh, by investing in the United Kingdom. Um, and then, of course, um, my wife uh, now continues to invest in the United Kingdom directly in, uh, you know, UK companies, uh, back to Mar Margaret Hodge's question, um, and we, we've, we've grown our investment here. Um, that's, I think, a good thing, um, and it should be celebrated. I am the beneficiary of the British dream, um, but I am, I am wealthy. You're absolutely right. Can you tell us how wealthy you are? Well, I, I don't think it's, it's right to sort of go into numbers because I will probably you know, get it wrong. Is that because you're so wealthy? No, because, because these things move around, because you know, some of the assets that, that um, my wife now obviously controls in the UK because we invest you know, heavily, in, she does, in the United Kingdom. It's fair to say you're comfortable for the rest of your lives. We're, I'm very lucky. We are very comfortable. Can a single mum in Wall's End or Wigan believe you have her best interests at heart given how wealthy you are? Yes, she can because I tell you how, because I've seen um, hardship. My father lost everything. My home, our home, uh, was repossessed. Um, we had a nothing left other than a Vauxhall Senator, brown Vauxhall Senator car, where I had to make the choice as to whether I go to university or become a taxi driver. And my mum wouldn't let me become a taxi driver, minicab driver in the Vauxhall, because that's all we had left. Um, she said, no, you go to university. I read chemical engineering. Uh, I came out. I've been very lucky uh, in business and have done incredibly well. Um, so I've seen it both ways. I am self-made. And I think what really drives me is delivering the opportunity uh, for that mother in uh, at Wigan or Walsall and, of course, for her children um, and other children around the country. We held cabinet a few weeks ago in Stoke-on-Trent. Um, in the three constituencies of Stoke-on-Trent, there's only one outstanding school. That can't be right. I don't believe the children in Stoke-on-Trent are any less talented than the children in Stratford-on-Avon or in South Kensington. They just don't have the great school with a great teacher. Uh, and that opportunity to make something of their lives. And I'm determined to deliver that. We've talked about this before, but you did um, claim for heating the stables where the horses were. Um, you did pay it back. Um, you said it was a mistake. But is that really the point? It was a mistake because we bought, my wife and I, a, a cottage uh, with a riding school. Uh, there was an electricity meter in the riding school. There was an electricity meter in, in the cottage. Um, I was um, uh, uh, 
told by the, the, the then chief whip that you, know, you should claim for your, uh, uh, you're allowed to for your basic running costs. Um, it's the right thing to do, even if you don't think um, uh, you need it. Um, I put in the claim, N genuine mistake, not realizing that actually, although there was two meters, um, it was coming in on a single bill. Um, when it became public, um, there was um, a, 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 an investigation, full investigation into this uh, by the parliamentary authorities. They could see it was a genuine mistake. Um, and they agreed with me that it was a complete error, mistake. Um, and of course, I apologized and repaid it. Embarrassed? Of course, deeply embarrassing. Um, but it, it was a genuine mistake. It's much better to, 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 to sort of, you know, um, admit and uh, demonstrate um, than to do anything else. Okay, let me give you that. You've run out of water. Um, let's talk about the President's Club. Uh, it was an event in 2018 in the Dorchester, just up the road here. Waitresses, um, female staff said that they were groped. Um, you were there. What did you see? So I was Children and Families Minister and uh, I was invited because this was a charity that raises over a million pounds for uh, children's hospitals like Great Ormond Street Hospital. Um, I uh, arrived there um, and uh, just after nine, um, uh, it was an all male um, black tie do at the Dorchester. And just after nine, um, uh, uh, young ladies, hostesses um, uh, that you know, came around each table, which made me feel incredibly uncomfortable, which is why I you know, um, left uh, the uh, dinner and, and went home. And, you know, I think in uh, reflection, um, including the charity itself, uh, those sort of you know, all-male dinners are wrong. Um, and I think actually, you know, one of the things that I'm passionate about is that we treat people properly, including people who are there to serve us, um, um, you know, whether in government or elsewhere. And I think I've got a strong track record. Whoever I've worked with um, in government um, will tell you that I treat people with respect, I treat them properly, I engage with them because we are a team. That is how you deliver your know, great public services, by working as a team. What would you say to your sons if they were thinking about going to an event like that? Don't go. How would you deal with chronic sexual misbehaviour in the party? So I think it's really important that people who work uh, for members of parliament for the party are well protected, that we have really strong um, HR, um, uh, that they always feel they can um, uh, speak to someone if they're feeling vulnerable, if they're feeling in some way um, you know, um, threatened or, or um, mistreated. Uh, and I will promise you this, uh, that across government, uh, if I am prime minister, I will um, bring a, an independent um, uh, team. They're available in the private sector. They do it all the time in, in, in large organizations that will review all of our uh, practices because a professional HR department in government is really important. And I know the civil service agrees with me on this. It's really important that we sort of restore that faith that you know everyone in the team, you know, a junior member of staff, um, uh, you know, a middle-ranking member of staff can always feel that they work in a, a positive environment. There should be no place um, for abuse or you know, people feeling threatened or in, in some way entering an environment that's just not quite safe. That is just unacceptable. Uh, is it acceptable that the education minister, Andrea Jenkins, um, flipped her middle finger up to the public as she walked into Downing Street last week? No, I don't think it is. And I think Andrea um, put out a statement um, uh, apologising and uh, explaining that um, uh, she um, had you know, felt emotional and, and she'd been threatened um, many times in the past. But it's not right. Um, I Would you have disciplined her if you were still um, education secretary? I, I think it's important that you know, we hold, hold ourselves to the highest standards. What I did in education, uh, Kay, I hope you'll agree, um, was to sort of you know, make sure that teachers felt valued, that, that you know, parents felt her children felt um, uh, both you know, safe and able to learn. But would you have disciplined her? 
Well, I, I, I think it, it was wrong. I would have asked her to, to immediately uh, apologise okay. um, uh, for her actions. Um, how important is loyalty to you, given your actions with the Prime Minister over the last week? Very important. And I think I remained loyal till the end. In fact, uh, when I and many other colleagues went to see him on Wednesday night and I sat with him, I said to him, look, I've known you for 30 years. You know, I, you're going to, they're going to try and humiliate you and I can't bear seeing you being humiliated. I want you to, 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 to just explain to you what I think is about to happen and, and I hope you will consider it and um, you know, do this with dignity. Um, he wanted to um, can carry on uh, and um, I left and the next morning I felt very strongly. I had to then put it in writing just to repeat to him when I, that conversation in the evening and then help him make that decision. And I think he's sadly, um, uh, in many ways, um, uh, you know, uh, has had to resign uh, his uh, uh, position. And of course, uh, we are now into a leadership campaign. So what do you say to the backbenchers who you need to rely on in order to be prime minister? You need their votes. Um, what do you say to those who say you were treacherous, you were almost Brutus-like? Um, I, don't, I don't believe uh, that's true. I, all my life, um, I have tried um, to serve my country, the country that's given me everything. When asked to do the vaccines, I stepped up. When asked to become Secretary of State for Education, I stepped up. When he asked me to become his Chancellor, I stepped up. We were making preparations for this week's uh, presentation that he and I were going to give of how we're going to create that headroom and bring those taxes down that he really wanted to see us deliver on. Um, alas, we couldn't do it. And when I saw the writing on the wall where so many ministers had resigned, it was you know, becoming impossible to form a government. Um, I and a number of senior colleagues, uh, you know, I'm his chancellor after all, it, I think it's my duty to uh, actually sit with him and say, both as a friend of 30 years and his chancellor, this can't carry on. What are your relationship like with him now? Yeah, I'm his chancellor, Very, we, we speak almost daily. Um, it's a full-time job being a chancellor of course, um, running the country, um, as far as its finances are concerned, it's a full-time job running a campaign. Um, are you going to consider resigning as chancellor? Quite the opposite. Um, the first thing that uh, my perm secretary said to me, Tom Scholar, is um, uh, Chancellor, you, you um, are needed. We can't run, we can't steward the country without a Chancellor being in place. Um, and uh, my focus very much at the moment is to make sure um, we you know, continue, albeit in a caretaker government, to steward um, uh, the economy and I hope um, uh, then if I'm returned as Prime Minister uh, to be able to rebuild the economy and deliver some of those uh, tax cuts that I think I can deliver whilst bearing down on inflation. Um, and I think I'll be able to do both those things. Fine. Um, who's your hero? My heroine is Margaret Thatcher. I'll never forget. We arrived here on these shores in 1978. In 79, of course, she became uh, Prime Minister. My mother saying, a grocer's daughter, my son, has just become a prime minister in this great country that has given us uh, a home and has adopted us. You can do anything in this great country. And uh, an immigrant boy from Baghdad who couldn't speak a word of English is now Chancellor of the Exchequer and uh, is you know, having a, uh, a, a, a go at trying to become prime minister. This is the greatest country on earth, Kate. Okay? Good to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed, Thank Chancellor. You Thank you.